Here we are with Overlord Season 4, Episode 8. And yeah, last episode we pretty much wrapped up the Dwarven Kingdom. So, yeah, we don't know what comes next, right? We just have to wait and see, I guess. I mean, Demiurge had a, re a report for his stuff on the slain theocracy, so that could be maybe something that pops up and could be interesting. I would like to know more about that. And yeah, I would say, if you like what you see, leave a like, subscribe, or comment. Let me know what you think about this episode. And I would say, let's get to the episode. Oh, here we go. Oh, in the kingdom. Counter measurements. She insisted. And she says he wasn't he wasn't for it. I mean, I guess that makes sense, right? Wait, what? Yeah, I guess if you refuse, that would look bad. <clears throat> Dude, the text goes by so fast and there's so much. Oh, that's also happened already. <laughs> right? <clears throat> Elias? Bring him back? Dude, I have to rewatch this part after the episode so badly. And here's this guy again. <laughs> Dude, they look... The one guy looks like he's dead, and the other guy looks like he's sleep-deprived. So, he seems down, right? So, something might have happened. So, how much time has passed since the last time we saw them, like... Was there a time skip? Like, the Empire is a vessel state already, it seems like. Uh, the Theocracy had contacts with Ainz, with the Sorcerer Kingdom, and wanted him to help them defeat Yaldabao, and apparently they did now. So what happened? <laughs> what is going on? It feels like there was a time skip <laughs> that we don't know about. <clears throat> and yeah... It seems like they are talking about uh, about like the Sorcerer Kingdom taking like every job, like basically like every offer for anything where they get like asked for help or something, they just help. Which I mean makes sense, right? Because the Sorcerer Kingdom obviously has all the resources when it comes to like battle strength, right? Helping people with like battle or anything like that, right? Since Eins can just send out skeletons and shit. So if it's something like that where the resources is like manpower, labor, then he has like no problems with that. So why should he refuse? It just like nurtures his kingdom when he helps others, right? Because then his um, reputation goes up, right? Because everyone is like, oh, cook, look, he, he helped again.
So it sounds like he's just giving commands and knows jack shit about it. If it even works or not. Because she's working for Eins. <laughs> what did he say? Oh my god, I missed it. So I guess the undeads are maybe the laborer? To the theocracy. <coughs> Sorry. So what are they planning? Oh, ho, ho. And how do you want to do that? Trying to outsmart the smart people again. <laughs> And how do you want to do that? How do you want to bring down the hammer of justice? <laughs> he really thinks he can't fuck with Eins or the kingdom. He really thinks he can outsmart them and bring the hammer of justice down to them, to his. For his benefit. I doubt that. <clears throat> so I guess, I mean, the slain theocracy is obviously against Ions, right? Because he's a monster and they don't want him a monster on the, thr on the throne. Oh, <laughs> Pandora's actor. So I guess they just maybe want his help to scout. Like get information. Oh, back to the tomb. Oh, what is it? <clears throat> Must be something big. Or maybe it was Philip? Someone is ballsy. <laughs> because I guess it's Philip. Because she brought Philip in, I guess, in this whole thing. And he attacked, and now she feels bad about it because it's her mistake, basically.
Yep. Nah, he's not that smart. <clears throat> and it wouldn't really change anything. Oh, here we go, Hilma, <laughs> in front of Eins. He doesn't know. Dude, how much does Eins know how much is happening behind his back? Oh, he remembers the name. Oh, <laughs> God damn. Yeah, I guess she is so fearful that she has really no intentions to go against him. Because she knows it would end badly. Oh. Uh oh <laughs> oh my god he flips it on her oh did he say that he might be at fault for it because he's the superior of everyone here I didn't, I have to rewatch that. Do you need to cleanse your mouth? Oh. He is so nice. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. <laughs> now she understands how good it can be. Yeah, right? She experienced so much bad from his subordinates. Now Eins looks like, like a god. <laughs> Eins looks like a god because he's not punishing, but he is like nice. It's so funny. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of true, right? Because Eins is not really bad. He... Oh. Carrot and stick plan. <laughs> Operation Carrot and Stick. <clears throat> civil inside a civil war. <laughs> yeah, there are some small problems.
That's what it actually is. I mean, it is, right? <laughs> He's really stupid. I mean, from what we know, it really is just Philip being dumb. And so Eins is right. Because others just overthink it again. I mean... <clears throat> I mean... The smart people wouldn't dare to attack Eins, I think, because they know how strong he is. <laughs> Just kill him. <laughs> Carrot and stick. Or maybe not. <laughs> Everyone wants praise. No way! He knows a better way. <laughs> of course. Good job, Demiurge. You have found me out. <laughs> Nani? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> they go drastic. They go ballistic. Oh, here we go. The stick comes. Pledge your loyalty or get destroyed. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. This <clears throat> Philip <laughs> This idiot I 
I mean, somewhat. <clears throat> Does it still happen in this episode? Yeah, Zanek is more drastic than the king. Kill one guy to save our skins. Innocent? Not really, right? <laughs> right? I mean, he's kind of right, but it's maybe you could go about it a different way. <laughs> a vassal state. <laughs> okay. Oh, he has a good idea. Let's see it. V Renna? No. Harold. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, is there an after credit scene? There is, maybe? Skip, skip, skip. Oh. Yes. <laughs> right now. Oh. Wow, that was the episode. Let me know what you think. But yeah, it more like a slow episode again, right? After the last few that had like more action, all that stuff going on, um, and more informative. It seems like there was a time skip, right? Because apparently the theocracy requested help from the kingdom against the Aldebar, but they denied. And then the theocracy, uh, theocracy requested re uh, requested help from uh, the Sorcerer Kingdom against the Aldebar, and they accepted and killed the Aldebar. I mean, we know that that's not true because Demiurge was still around, right? Um, but they played it out like that. And now the Sorcerer Kingdom sends food to the theocracy. Um, so, f and in the meantime, also the Empire um, became a vassal state of the sorcerer kingdom so it seems like there was a small time skip with stuff that we don't know that we just hear about now um and then we saw um basically <clears throat> zach being like yeah giving some more information like yeah the sorcerer kingdom like accepts all requests basically they don't deny anything that's a bit too nice right <laughs> it's a bit disturbing how nice they are but i mean it makes sense because the Sorcerer Kingdom has bad reputation because a skeleton is on the throne, right? It's a monster, which isn't looking good for most people. But if he does good deeds, basically, it just increases his reputation, right? Because it's like, hey, it's a nice skeleton. He does help others and is not bad, right? So, cool. Go Sorcerer Kingdom. Woohoo! Um, and then we saw, like, Philip and his dumb plot to attack the Sorcerer Kingdom, which is pretty dumb because... He wanted to be in good grace with the Sorcerer Kingdom 
to have like right because the sorcerer kingdom is strong if he stands in good grace of the sorcerer kingdom that could be to his benefit and now he decides okay let's attack them because they are the reason why the kingdom and everyone has a lot of food and my idea to make crops um is pretty much fucked when there's so much food because my crops becomes useless because it's used for food right so his idea is yeah let's attack the sorcerer kingdom and yeah give them some justice and he got found out immediately everyone knows who it is <laughs> who it was and the whole scene with hilma was very funny because it makes sense right they always did the stick and carrot thing right do what we want and you get you get the carrot right or go against us and not do what we want and you get the stick right that's what they did as the eight fingers and now it happens to them right that since the eight fingers got t taken over by nazarick it's like do what we say and you get you can live <laughs> basically i guess it's not like you get good stuff it's more like you can live if you work for us and not be dead or something um or if you don't do what we say you get punished you get eaten out from the inside and get healed and get eaten out from the inside and get healed and you like that no then do what we say <laughs> basically i mean i guess that death would be good but i mean if hilma or the others would kill themselves i guess they would just be revived right <laughs> so that it's i think that's really what would happen right i guess in this case where they are right now I would imagine that they maybe thought about, dude, if I just die, that's good. No more punishment, no more fear, nothing. Just let me die. But I think they can't because if they kill each other or kill themselves, they just get revived. Because unlike like Shaltia where they have to spend like a lot of money to revive someone, right? They can just like low levels, they can just revive like nothing. Eins can revive them with just his weird stick, his his wand, right? And it's like nothing. Like the uh, warrior king. He could just revive him, nothing, no cost attached. So, I guess they can just revive them and be like, yep, you can't escape. It's either torture or do what we say. But I mean, maybe Hilma... <clears throat> Hilma isn't low level, right? I mean... She must, I mean, because they said if someone is low level, then, and he gets revived, he would just, like, become ashes, right? So, because you lose levels, and if you, when you get revived, and if you lose too many levels, you just die when you are revived. So, I guess Hilma might not be low level, so that she could revive that, because if she is low level, because she must be somewhat strong, right? Otherwise, how can she be so powerful and have, like, rule over people? I don't know. I mean, the other dude that had that was one of the Eight Fingers in Season 1 that Climb fought against, that one wasn't strong. So, I mean, if she couldn't survive a, re a, a revive, a resurrection, wouldn't it be a good idea to just die so that she doesn't have to live in fear? Maybe she just likes living so much that even that she goes through the whole fear and punishment part and is like, okay, I'd rather live than die. Hmm. Interesting to think about that stuff. Um, but yeah. Um, but yeah, she get, gets now the stick and carrot treatment, treatment basically. And now in front of Ainz, who is like, okay, she's innocent. She shouldn't be punished for what this Philip guy did. Um, while Alberto is like, she should be punished. So if there wasn't Eins, she would get punished. But Eins is like, nope, she is not. The, she's not at, at fault here. Um, she sees him as like the greatest guy ever, right? It's very funny. And now her subordinates that we saw are like, okay, she says he is nice and cool. Then we have to show him more loyalty and have to work harder for him. <laughs> it just Eins is being Eins, and everyone is like, dude, compared to the, those other guys, he's like a god for us. <laughs> He's so good to us. He's so nice. Um, it's very funny to see that stuff. And yeah, 
<clears throat> now the kingdom talked about it, what they should do, because they got the letter from Eins that basically declares war. Kind of like, it's like, I think they said become a vassal state or war, right? Um, and the king is like, yeah, no, we can't do that. Um, maybe they didn't say it, but it's like, they send a letter like, yep, that was a hostile action of one of your kingdom, and so this this might be war. And there are a lot of seals on it. There's the Sorcerer Kingdom seal, the Empire seal, the Dragon seal, the Theocracy seal, the Dwarven seal, and the Faceless seal. Who are the Faceless? Do we know that? Are, are the Faceless the demi-humans that are working under the Theocracy? But yeah, lots of seals all stacked against the kingdom when we know that Eins alone could destroy the kingdom. <laughs> he doesn't even need Nazar Nazarick. He doesn't need anyone. He can he can just do it himself, basically, um, because that's what he basically did in the war, Empire versus Kingdom, right? So yeah, and now there's like so much other parties that are behind Eins and Nazarick and Sorcerer Kingdom, and that are like sealing that declaration of war, basically. And the king's like, yeah, no, nah, nah, we can't do that, right? We can't just become a vassal state or anything like that because that would be disrespectful to all the people that died in the war that got killed by the sorcerer king. <clears throat> and I feel like that's pretty dumb, right? It's, and Zack came around with the idea, yeah, just take the head of the noble that started this and take use that as negotiation, right? Basically what El Nix did. And the king's like, how dare you say that? That's not good. That's not nice. That's bad. Um, but I mean, in this, in face of this great threat for the kingdom, I would say that's reasonable, right? Especially because the king says he is innocent. That dude is not innocent. He started, he attacked the sorcerer kingdom, basically. The food transport. That's not innocent, I would say. It's not that he threw a stone against the fucking wall. And it's like, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> it, yeah. And yeah, but I'm very interested to see the, to see the next episode because now the king is like in front of in front of Albedo. Yeah, um could you forgive us if I give my head? So that's very interesting because on one side if the king dies because they take his head, right? Then Zack would become the king, right? And that could be very beneficial for Ains because Zack would be like, okay, yeah, vessel state, go. I am happy. Um, so Zack would be easier to get to sign like a vessel state contract or whatever, right? Or anything really, um, because he is like more ob obedient. I would say in in face of the great threat that Eins can be, um, while the king is more stubborn it seems like um or maybe Renner could deal with zach when he's king so that could also be beneficial right um but i mean it could also look very bad if Ains takes kills the king right so that could maybe tarnish his reputation a bit then they could be like yeah see he is a bad guy he killed the king he didn't negotiate or anything he just killed him so yeah Interesting to see how that turns out. And man, I'm talking so much. 11 minutes. So yeah, that's it, I would say. If you like what you saw, leave a like, subscribe, or... <clears throat> if you like what you saw, leave a like, subscribe, or comment. Let me know what you think. And I would say thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>